there is a poison that has been unleashed in this world by the devil, a poison of depression, a poison of unhappiness, a poison of pain, the poison of bitterness, the poison of being offended. And there is an antidote for all pain and there's an antidote for all unhappiness. And I want to talk to you about what that antidote is. And I want to talk to you about um, how to how to walk in this antidote, how to how to trigger or how to release the power of this antidote. And, in, and let me take you to a scripture real quick first, though. In Matthew chapter nine, verse thirty five, look at what Jesus said or it says about Jesus uh, in Matthew chapter nine, verse thirty five. It says, now Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom. What was he preaching? The gospel. That word gospel is good news. What was he preaching? The gospel. What is the gospel? Good news. It's not bad news. It's good news. He was preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. He was healing how many sicknesses? Every sickness. And how many diseases? Every disease. Everybody say every. So there was no sickness or no disease that he didn't heal. So and we and there was no village or city, at, at least in that populated area at that time that they were referring to, that Jesus did not enter into. He went about all the cities and villages. He's not saying, look, Jesus moved fast. Jesus accomplished more. The Bible says if we had recorded and wrote down and, and, and if we had written down everything that Jesus said and ta- not everything he said, It literally says in John 21, if we were to write down everything Jesus did, then there would not be enough books in the world to contain all that Jesus did in three years of ministry. So, man, he was moving as fast as lightning. He created lightning so he could move faster than it. And he was all he went into every village. And how many know if, if Jesus was here today, how many know he would have come into this city? And he would have healed every disease and every sickness here also. And here's the good news. Jesus is here because he said, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. So good news is he's here. Better news is he still heals every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. Now, the word disease, I want to focus on that for a moment. The word is disease to be to to not be at ease, disease. It, It really is connected to the word disorder that something is out of order in your mind, in your emotions, in your body or in your family. Something is out of order and Jesus heals whatever is out of order. He heals whatever that wherever there is disorder or dis-ease. He brings ease and he brings order where there is pain. He brings healing where there is brokenness. He brings restoration where there is where there is down being downcast. He brings an uplifting moment where there is where there is uh, depression. He brings joy where there is where there is lack. He brings provision. He always he's the antidote. He's always he always counteracts whatever life has poisoned you with. Can anybody say amen? Amen. And so we need to get a hold of the reality of what Jesus came to do. Preach the gospel and heal every kind of sickness and every kind of disease. And if I can if I can explain it to you this way, uh, this is this is God's will for you, because God created us. He wired us to be healed. He wired us to want to get better. Nobody gets sick and then says, hallelujah, I hope I stay this way a long time. Nobody gets a cold and says, "Woo, thank you, Lord. I pray that I would keep this the rest of my life. Come on, help me now. (laughs) Nobody gets cancer and says, oh, man, this cancer. I am. Oh, this cancer. I I hope it kills me. I can't wait till I die. I just I'm so looking forward to to the day that that it just devours me from the inside. No, no, no. Nobody says that. Why? Because we were wired to be well. You were wired to be healed. God wired you to want to be better, to want to recover. He did not wire you to be sick. He did not wire you. Satan wired you to be sick. Satan wired you to be to be diseased. And I I like this verse because Jesus is the antidote 
to what the devil has what the devil has poisoned the world with. The devil poisoned the world with sin, with shame, with sickness, with disease, with disaster, with tragedy, with um, with with dis, with uh, depression and with with abuse and with uh, with addiction and, and you name it, anything bad, anything negative, anything that is a disease is something that Satan brought into this earth through Adam. And Jesus came to heal every disease, to take the dis out of the ease, to take the sick out of the nest, to take. Yeah, are you hearing me? He came to take it away. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. But he doesn't just take away the sin of the world. The Bible says he bore our pain and carried our infirmities and by his stripes were healed. He carried away our diseases, the scripture says in Isaiah chapter 53. He came to carry away our sin and carry away our disease and carry away our addictions. And people have, have argued for years, well, is, is an addiction a sickness? Is alcohol? Lism, a sickness is is uh, or is it is it a disease or is this just a bad habit or is it something you let me tell you something that the devil, when he got a hold of Adam and Eve, he unleashed hell in the earth. He unleashed every form of sickness, every form of disease, every form of mental disorder, emotional disorder, lack and poverty, envy and hatred, depression and fear, sadness and shame. Satan unleashed all of that. And that's what his whole goal was, was to give birth to this, the harvest of his seed of, of darkness. And God's goal was to give birth to his seed and, and to God's seed through Jesus. But look, here's the point. So Satan unleashes all this darkness and all this negativity through Adam and Eve, through one man's sin, judgment came to the world. And we have to understand. So when somebody says, well, I don't know, it's like, like people have argued with me and said, well, I, you know, maybe you shouldn't say that um, that that alcoholism or a drug addiction is a sickness or a disease. Maybe you shouldn't say that a mental disorder is a sickness or a disease. Maybe it's just that person is sinning and they keep sinning and then they develop a habit. OK, and I'm not I'm not I'm not wanting to absolve anybody from personal responsibility because we are responsible for our lives. Come on, we are responsible for the choices we make. But I'm telling you, I do side with the medical profession that calls certain addictions diseases. And you know why I side with medical with the medical profession when they call certain things diseases? Because then I can encourage that person who believes they have that disease. I can encourage them that Jesus came to heal that disease and heal that medical condition and heal that. I don't care what you call it. Call it a disease. Call it a habit. Call it a, a struggle. Call it whatever you want to call it. But let me tell you what I call it. I call it healed by the stripes of Jesus. I call it something that Jesus came to do something about. Jesus came to remove it. Jesus came to heal it. Jesus came to deliver you from it. My whole life is devoted to bring in the real Jesus to this world. I mean, he already brought himself. So I'm not like, oh, wow, thanks, Pastor. You brought Jesus to the world. <laughs> well, we need to thank Mary, you know, because she helped. And we need to thank all his ancestors because they were a part of it. But my point is, is the message that I bring to you is not a message of religion and condemnation and self-righteous rules that we have to check off all the boxes so we can now feel good about ourselves. No, I came to bring you the gospel of good news that you don't have to check off any boxes. Jesus checked off all the boxes. Jesus paid all the price. Jesus did it all. And all we've got to do is believe that he is who he says he is and then believe that we are who he says we are and nothing's going to stop us then. But let me tell you something. So the devil works his way into Adam and Eve's life. And what is he and what is his goal? His goal is to release into the earth the seed of judgment and destruction. Judgment. I want to show you something here that you may not realize. Judgment never came from God. Judgment came from sin. Judgment came from the devil. Judgment didn't come from God. Judgment came from the. Let me show you what I mean by that. Go to Romans chapter five, verse 17. Romans chapter five, verse 17. I want to show you something that's going to set you free. Because there are people here right now that you have something that you people may call or even the Bible may call a curse that was passed down from your parents. Maybe you have bipolar, a bipolar disorder 
that, she, that was passed down to you. You say, well, I don't, my parents didn't have it. But you know what? Your great, 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 granddaddy, Adam, he gave it to you. You go all the way back to Adam, he gave you that. Alcoholism, he gave you that. Uh, the disease to please, he gave you that. The disease of, of, of cancer, he gave you that. We're all subjected in our natural self, in our human, when as soon as we're born into this world, we're born as Adam's seed, and we are a, and inside of us is, is the seed of destruction, and that's why we do things that destroy us because we are simply activating the seed of destruction that Adam planted in us. I don't know if this makes sense to anybody, but I'm going somewhere with this. So Adam, Adam planted the seed of destruction in, in us. Look at how he did it. And there's good news to what I'm about to say. This ends up really good. Because when you think about it, somebody, somebody who has a diabetic condition often got it from their parents, right? Somebody who has a depressed condition often got it from their parents. Some people that, were, that have been alcoholics got it from their, their parents. Some people that have a, a, a proclivity towards this sin or that sin or this behavior or that behavior, they got it from something their parents did to them or didn't do to them or something their, their parents just passed down to them without anybody's knowledge. It's not like, it's not like your parents were like, well, I'm going to give birth to you, but when I give birth to you, I'm going to take that genetic DNA of, of, of cancer that I had, and I'm going to pass it down to you. No parent does that intentionally. It just happens because it flows through the bloodline. It flows through the bloodline. So someone said, you know, I, I became an alcoholic. At the, like for me, I became an alcoholic at the age of 16 years old. Is that because my parents, you know, were pouring alcohol down my throat, you know, in my crib? No. I was when I was in my crib, but they weren't doing it. <laughs> is, but is that because they were doing that to me? No, no, no. It wasn't intentional. It wasn't even, they weren't even cognizant of it. I got that. I might not, they might not have passed that down to me directly from them, but they passed it down to me through them, it came through them from Adam. I didn't do anything to deserve it. What child does anything to deserve alcoholism? What child does anything to deserve a mental disorder? What child does anything to deserve a bipolar disorder? What child does anything to deserve depression or anxiety or ADHD or ADD or ADT? I don't know who you use for your security, but I'm just telling you. What, what child does any of that to earn? Nobody does it to deserve it. Nobody does anything to earn it. Nobody does anything to deserve it. It is passed through the blood. And here, here's what my point is. For by one man's offense, death reigned through the one. Death reigned through what? Through who? Through the one. Who's the one he's talking about? Adam. So death, you, death crowns you through Adam. Because of Adam, death crowns all of mankind. Through Adam, death has crowned. Death reigns. So death has crowned everybody under Adam. Through Adam. Through one man's offense. But listen to the good news here. Much more. Do, now, let me ask you something. Does death reign over everybody because of Adam? Oh yeah, that's bad news. But much more. In other words, as bad as that is, something's much more better than how bad that is. Much more of those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, they will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. So look, death reigned through Adam, but abundance of grace and gift of righteousness, and we, look, death reign, death crowned you as a victim through Adam, but Jesus crowns you as a victor through his blood. Through, through Adam's blood, you've been crowned a victim. But through Jesus' blood, you've been crowned a victor, more than a conqueror, victorious in Christ. And you didn't get that because you went to Bible college. You didn't get that because you went to the right school. You didn't get that because you were born in the right nation. You got that because it was passed down to you from the blood of Jesus right into your living soul, right into your living body. You now have the same right to say, I'm healed by his stripes because 
of his blood. The same way that somebody had diabetes because of the parent's blood. The same way somebody got an addiction because of the parent passing it down to them. The same way that somebody got a heart disease because of the parent passing it down to them. You now can say that person didn't deserve that bipolar. That person didn't deserve that disease, but they got it by blood. Well, guess what? Much more those who have received Jesus Christ have now got healing by his blood. We have deliverance by his blood. We reign in life by his blood. Oh, I wish you could, I wish you could get this. You know, I tell you what, if you could get this, if you would get this, you would be up here with me. Except we'd be like having a, well, what do they call it? When everybody gets up on and starts going like, I mean, we, I don't know what it's, I don't know if it's called anything. I just made it up. But I'm telling you, that's what we'd be doing. We'd be celebrating. Verse 18, look at what he says. So therefore, as through one man's offense, judgment came to all men. So when you think whenever the devil starts put whispering in your mind, God's judging me because I did this. God's judging me because I did that. God's judgment. It's God's judgment. It's God's judgment. It's God's judgment. Mm, let me see where judgment came. Therefore, through one man's offense, judgment came to all men. God didn't judge you. Adam's offense brought judgment. Just like you can't go, you, you can't go, you can't look in your backyard and you can see all those marijuana plants growing up in your backyard and go, oh, God's judging me. God's not judging you. Those are the seeds that you planted or your neighbor planted in your yard, <laughs> hoping to go get a harvest a few months later without taking the risk of him being caught. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I don't know if you guys remember, but back at the old church, the old church was right around the corner. There was this uh, crab, crab, crab tree um, uh, forest preserves or crab something forest preserves. I forget what it's called, but it's right around the corner of the old church by 59 in Bartlett. And, um, and I don't know if you knew this, but like 10 years ago, they found, they were doing a helicopter, you know, thing, and they, were, they found these guys living in that forest preserve, and they had grown $10 million worth of marijuana in those forest preserves. And it, once I found out about that, I, I then realized why I always was seem to be drawn to pray in that forest preserve. <laughs> I, I always... It's like I was like, I didn't pray at the, my office. I didn't pray at the house. For some reason, I was just drawn. I was, I was just like, I was just tr in a trance. And I, I was just drawn to the forest preserve. And there, in the, and, I, and, and I don't know why, but every time I prayed there, I felt good. <laughs> I mean. And then when I read that article, it all dawned on me. You know, I've been back there many times to try to recapture those moments with the Lord. And I haven't felt the same since. I have never felt that. You know why? Because they cleared all that dope out of there. <laughs> Put those dopes in jail. And this dope was hoping for a contact buzz still a few years later. I'm just, now I'm fooling around with that last sentence. But judgment didn't come because God said, I'm going to judge you because you've been so sinful. Judgment came through one man's offense, resulting in condemnation. God doesn't condemn. It's one man's offense brought the judgment to all men that condemns all men. But even so, in the same way that every man is condemned because of Adam, even so, through one man's righteous act, the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. Look at verse 19. So then, through one, by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. You didn't become a sinner because you sinned. You became a sinner because of Adam's disobedience. You didn't get that disease because of your sin. I know you may have done something to trigger that, the effects of that disease, but it was already in you from Adam. Listen to what I'm trying to tell you. 
that thing was already in you. It came from Adam. Yeah. So you say, well, how come that person smoked you know, cigarettes all their life and nothing bad ever happened to them? And that guy smoked a few weeks, a few months and he got lung cancer because that guy with the, that, that got the lung cancer. I understand smoking can cause cancer, so I don't encourage anybody to smoke. But my point is, is why does one guy get it and one guy doesn't? Because that guy that did get the cancer, he didn't get it just because just because of the cigarettes, because many people get cancer without smoking cigarettes. He didn't get it because of the cigarettes. Now, he could have triggered it because of that, but he got it because of Adam. He got it because of Adam and Eve. He got it because life and death ruled over him and he ate the grass. He smoked the dope. He smoked the nicotine. He smoked the, the vegetation that was wrapped up in a cigarette rather than ruling over the vegetation, having dominion in life. The vegetation ruled over him. You know why people are so they get so they get so addicted to or they manifest the addictions of alcohol and 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 all these things. It's, it's because death is reigning over them because of Adam rather than them reigning over over death. So look, God told us to have dominion. And when we have dominion, the vegetation is not going to control us. The grass and the weed and and the and the barley and the hops are not going to rule over us. We're going to rule over them. And if you have a beer, when you have dominion, you know when to stop. When it has dominion over you, you don't know when to. Oh, man, don't get. Uh. <sighs> now, through one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So also by one man's obedience, many are made righteous. So you're not made righteous because of your obedience. You're made righteous because of whose obedience? Jesus obedience. You're not made a sinner because of your sin. You're made a sinner because of whose sin? Adam's disobedience made you a sinner. Christ's obedience makes you righteous. Verse 20. Look at this. He says, moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. Grace abounded much more. Grace abounded much more. So God's goal was to get grace into your life. And here's the point. Here's the point. So all that stuff was already in us. So listen, all of Adam's brokenness, all of Adam's disease, all of all that Adam brought into this world, all the sin, all the disease, all the shame, all the guilt, all the worry, all the depression. It was all locked up in Adam's seed. When Adam sinned, he became a sinner and then he birthed sin into the world through Cain and Abel, who then multiplied it throughout the world. And that and so we have inside of us when we're born into this world, we have inside of us Adam's sin nature, his seed of sin is in us. And we do things that trigger that that that, that unleash that seed to produce a harvest. We end up we end up pulling triggers that don't create that condition or that disease. It just awakens and it just the dormant disease that's in us. It awakens it through something we do to trigger it. It's already in there, but we trigger it with various ways that activate the sinful harvest of Adam's sin. Why am I saying this? Because in the same way, when you are born again, the seed of Jesus is inside of you, the incorruptible seed of healing, the incorruptible seed of salvation, the incorruptible seed of victory, the incorruptible seed of deliverance, the incorruptible seed of being more than a conqueror, the incorruptible seed of being the head and not the tail, the incorruptible seed of being above and not beneath, the incorruptible seed of joy, the incorruptible seed of peace, the incorruptible seed of a life full of joy and full of love and full of peace and full of happiness, that in corruptible seed is in you. You are born again with it, just like you were born with Adam's seed. You're born again with Jesus' seed. And the Bible calls Jesus the second Adam. So Adam births into us this seed that we do things that activate it. We do things that trigger it. But Jesus caused us to be born again, puts his incorruptible seed of the new creation in Christ inside of us. And guess all we got to do? There's just a few things we got to do to activate 
that seed that is in us. Confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and guess what happens? You activate that seed of salvation. The Bible says death and life are in the power of the tongue. So as you speak words of healing over your body, as you speak words of healing over your soul, over your mind, over your emotions, over who you are in Christ, I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. You saying it does not make you that. God already made you that. You saying it activates the energy of it. It activates the power of it. It activates the reality of it. Showing up in this natural world, what is already the inside of your human, heavenly created new spirit. Does anybody hear what I'm saying? You see, in the same way that there are things that I did that activated Adam's seed in me, which led me to the, the, the trouble of my life, now Jesus causes me to be born again, not because of anything I did. Now I activate his power with my words. I activate his power when I pray in tongues. I don't care what anybody thinks about me when I pray in tongues. I don't care if they say, I'm going to a church that doesn't pray in tongues. You know what, you're gonna to go to a church that doesn't preach about praying in tongues, but you'll find people that pray in tongues in those churches because you can't hide tongues from the Bible. If somebody reads the, Bi somebody reads the Bible, they're gonna run into some tongues. You're going to run into some tongues. You read that Bible just like you're going to run into some, you're going to run into some tongues when you put your shoes on. But let me tell you something. There's a tongue in every shoe. And there is a <laughs> And there are tongues in that Bible. I don't care what people think cuz I'm activating my faith when I speak in tongues. I don't care what Oh, you're one of those <laughs> One of those what? Born again son of the living God, child of heaven rather than the child of hell that I was. You're one of those. Yeah, you mean one of those more than conquerors. You're one of those. Yeah, you mean one of those forgiven by the blood of Jesus. One of those. Yeah, yeah. I'm one of those that carry in me now the DNA of Jesus blood, the royalty of his blood, the love of the father the grace of God, the goodness of God, the healing power of God. So all I got to do is activate it. And you know how powerful you are if you share the gospel with your mouth, if you share the gospel, even write it down and hand it to somebody, you know you're activating the salvation that God provided for that person. You're literally activating a miracle by you spreading the gospel, sharing your faith. You're activating the gift of salvation in somebody else's life. That's how powerful you are. That's what you carry. You're not some empty shell. You carry you wall to wall Holy Spirit on the inside of you. You're wall to wall power on the inside of you. You're all you got to do is activate it. And every time you speak to the mountain, be removed and cast into the sea. Guess what Jesus said would happen? It will obey you. That's reigning in life. That's reigning in life. You know, every time we don't have time to get into this, but I'll just mention real quick um, where we're living in a world that is so depressed. There's so much suicide. There's so much anxiety. There's I looked I've studied this. I've researched this. There's there are hundreds of antidepressant medications, anti-anxiety medications, millions and millions and millions of prescriptions, billions and trillions of dollars that is spent. And look, I believe in medication when it's prescribed and applied properly for a time being while you discover how to activate the real healing. And let me tell you something why people do drugs, people get into addictions and you might not agree with me on this, but I want to say it anyway. You, you can do the research yourself. But whenever a person is doing something wrong, particularly a Christian person, whenever a believer commits some sort of sin in most cases, not in all because there are exceptions to anything, but in most cases, what they're trying to do is fix something in their life. The reason a person might get hooked on drugs is not because, well, that person is just a drug addict. That person is trying to fix something inside of him, not the right way, not going about fixing it the right way, but he's trying to fix something. Anytime a girl prostitutes herself, it's not, that, oh, she's just a prostitute. She's just a whore. She's just this. She's, you know what she's trying to do? Fix something. She's not going about it the right way. She's trying to fix something. Why do you think that woman came to the well and said, give me well water from this well? This, 
And Jesus said, I will give you the water from the well that you'll never thirst again. And she's like, I, that's what I've been searching for. That's why I've been married so many times. She's, Jesus said, go get your husband and, we'll, and I'll serve you both some of this, some of this water. And, he, and, and she said, I don't have a husband. And he said, you're right, you've had five husbands and the guy that you're living with now isn't your husband, but go get him anyway because I am the God of all grace. I'm the God of all mercy. He, he, he didn't say, he didn't say, uh, go to get that guy and kick him out of your house first, number one. Number two, uh, then show that you can live uh, abstain for the next six months. And then number three, uh, go to the justice of the peace and get a marriage certificate. And then number four, come and I will serve you water to drink and you will never thirst again. You know who's gonna come to that party, right? Nobody. Nobody's going through all that to get some water. <laughs> Jesus didn't put all that religious garbage on them. He said, look, We'll deal with that later. We'll deal, with, we'll deal with your sanctification later. Right now, we just need to deal with your salvation. Go get that guy. Get him. I don't care if he's your husband or not. He's the guy you care about. Bring him with you. Both of you are going to drink. Both of you are going to be changed. And then go back to Samaria and tell them all what the Lord has done for you. Now, we can't have... But we can't have that couple coming into the church because a few of us know they're living together and they're not married. Oh, pray tell, what are you doing that nobody knows about that nobody's found out about yet? Should we talk about, should we kick you out of the church because of your sin? How about gossip? Oh, you're not an adulterer. You're, oh, God bless you, Holy One. You haven't committed adultery, but you've gossiped and they're kind of in the same sentence as far as Jesus is concerned. I'm not saying go out and commit adultery. I'm not saying to go out and, and commit gossip. I'm saying don't be self-righteous. We all need this mercy. We all need this grace. I'm out of time. Stand to your feet. Let's get out of here. I command you in the name of Jesus to freely receive your healing. We're wired to be healed. We seek to get better. We may seek it in the wrong places, but Jesus has given us a better place. By his stripes, we can be healed. We called on his name to be saved. We can call on his name to be healed. Lift your hands to the Lord and just say, Heavenly Father, in the same way that I confess Jesus as Savior and Lord, and I was saved, I confess Jesus as healer and Lord, and I am healed. I receive healing in my soul, in my mind, in my body, it is well, in Jesus' name, amen.